Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archived classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from beautiful upstate New York, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show, and welcome to Walk on Wednesday. Walk on Wednesday is the day of the week where we get one of our listeners, generally one of our listeners, who, um, you know, sort of got an interesting story, interesting life, interesting friend. And today we have one of these great souls, one of my uh, partners in uh, partners in crime. Let's say partners in crime. Uh, Bobby Marchand. Welcome to the show, Bobby. Thank you, Prabhu. Prabhu's. Good to see you. Great to see you. Thank Bobby's you for also having in, me. Bobby's also in upstate New York. And Bobby, she's got many, many, many wonderful qualities. We do our teacher trainings together. We're doing our teacher training in Kali, Columbia this year, our restorative yin and bhakti training. Um, but um, it was standing out how uh, healthy and vibrant and um, insanely insightful she is in so many ways. And... Um, how long have you been a cancer survivor? Well, technically, is it, a, is it called a cancer survivor? Is that it? Is, is that, it is okay. called a, I, I, it's still the politically correct term. Correct thing. I don't know. I How don't know dare you that. call me a cancer survivor? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess technically, um, I'm a cancer survivor um, for now 10 years because okay. round one, yeah, round one was in 2011, and then my victory lap was in um 2009 no, 2000, yeah 2019 Congratulations. so thank you so the most recent um and hopefully uh never again uh has now been for uh, a year and a half of remission so that is beautiful it's beautiful it's beautiful did it's specifically interesting um as you practice bhakti and this mm -hmm. is what i want to want to get get out this morning what was yeah. it like to practice bhakti going through what you went through was it helpful was it i know we talk about things like you know death and how the body's temporary did that pinch more or was it sort of comfortable i'm, I'm curious it was it was both um because there's, you know, there was so much um, of what I knew of, like, my physical body uh, being um, altered and, uh, for lack of a better, and, like, I mean, like, kind of the only way I can put it is being stripped. Like, I was stripped of what I knew um, my body to be. And so it was in that real time realization of the temporality and it was if i didn't have the morning every morning to, to, to tune in and listen i could have easily aligned with fear but the bhagavatam mm. helps align with faith that um to have grace in the impermanence and 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 be, because it's 
presented with so many of the sages also being stripped of what they know. So like the prayers of Queen Kunti were something that I just sat with and sat with and sat with. Um, this is, this is, is uh, uh, close to it, it, this is uh, a wisdom of the sages win here. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> You know, so I don't know, know if I can put, take full credit. For no, I can take full credit well, for no, this one. I mean, you, your <laughs> cancer survival, it's us. No. But, it, no, it, but, but what it is, is it's, it's everything that everybody in the Bhagavatam is going through. Some, some type of all tragic. Going through it. Yeah. We're all going through it. We're all going through it. And, and, and even, you know, on the other side of it, I, and I was having... Um, conversations too with like other listeners um other zoomers like danny kazakowski to i'm name i'm mm. name dropping i'm zooming name dropping yeah, but we that. were having conversations about okay we're in remission now what hmm. now what so like it, it to have sort of the um the bhagavatam and the acuteness of disease was one thing and then on the other side it's still like keeping our foot on the gas of spiritual practice. Like it isn't sort of like a love it and leave it proposition. Like that was the, the spiritual practices and the people um, that help illuminate really become a, an incredibly powerful anchor, not mm -hmm. just in the, in the moment, but the realization of how important those relationships are to, um, staying connected and aligned with it helped me align with what I really value. Um, mm -hmm. and not, and not just in the moment, but how I wanted to communicate myself as, as a, as a person going through it to my medical people, right. Mm -hmm. It actually helped me change my languaging. Mm -hmm. Um, it, in, in the cancer world, um, having, f having spiritual faith allowed me to put, you know, um, I found myself to be calmer in the clinic. You know, Bobby, I, all, all around, I was so impressed with you. Like it was, well, it's actually, yeah. you know, it was, the, I, I'm no medical cancer expert or anything, but <laughs> it was like, um, it was serious. It was serious. And, it was and, serious. Uh, yeah. And, and, um, but not only that, but you're also a single mother at the time, had just had a new child. Yeah. Um, it was, you were really going through it about as rough as a person can go through it. And, and I was always so impressed with how composed you were through the whole thing. And, uh, and one could see that, although you were somewhat new to Bhakti, you know, somewhat new yeah. to the Bhagavatam and all that, yeah. uh, the, the sincerity and the faith that you had uh, was really apparent. Oh, and uh, wow. so it's, it's wonderful for me to hear you speak like this. To it's be a, to me. well, to have that uh, that um, validation and appreciation from from you and from Raghunath and like that's, I mean, that uh, is humbling and touching and also to 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 be so frequently in the presence of both of you and. Um, seeing the way that that faith manifests and you know like i've also watched you um uh support people who are ill and with with calmness and kindness and integrity and um you know w something like um you know the cancer's a lot in the media Mm -hmm. And it yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to be public either. And one of the things that I appreciated most about um, the bhakti practices is that the sharing of the heart is still done in confidence. And I remember having conversations with both you and Raghunath that were particular. And, and you know, um, speaking too with Donadar Maharaj, um, that were particularly tender and I knew they wouldn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And there is something about, you know, being in the medical uh, roller coaster where like you're basically public or not public property, 
and public knowledge, but there is a little bit of that. So to be able to be kind of held in a community that um, was was sensitive it was really lovely, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, I remember the day I was diagnosed that, you know, Raghu and I sat in the studio at Super Soul, and he just looked at me and he's like, "Well, I don't want this to take you." He's like, "But if this is going to take you, I'm going to chant you right out of your body." Mm-hmm. And like, no, I, maybe like, not been the most comforting thing to say. I'm going to chant you right, right, <laughs> right out of your body. And like, as terrified as I was in that moment, I was like, cool. Like, <laughs> <laughs> great. Well, at least I've got that going. Um, but yeah, but I also like a lot of, a lot of um, uh, circles might try to, um, not sit with you in the polarity of the, mm-hmm. of the disease mm-hmm. or diseased state, right? They'll just like shine up the, the positive, like the, the, right. that, but to be able to be with people that are going to sit with you in, and, mm-hmm. and, and a, and a practice that sits with you in the pendulum swing is pretty, right. pretty dope. Actually. That's, that's- that's interesting because that it speaks to the idea like sometimes when we're reading Bhagavatam, we're, it seems like, why are you, what, what, what's all this um, obsession with the dark side of life? Yeah. But, but, uh, but it prepares us because that dark side is going to come up and are we going to yeah. be able to sit with it or, or is it, or are we just going to try to polish over it and ignore it and not deal exactly. with it? Exactly. Yeah. Like I, I kind of equate it to like um, the Bhagavatam is like this rope that, I can like lower myself down into like the depths and kind of like look around, uh-huh. be with it. And then like, like kind of pull myself back up. But um, it, it speaks to how to d- like deal in the dark. And it doesn't have to be like echoing your point, shiny and glossy, like, there's appropriate it, practice for when things are dark I love and there's this. appropriate practice when things are light. Yeah. And there's, a, and there's always a light, even when you're in the it's dark, always light. <laughs> right? there's but, always light. Light. but an artificial light always. won't work. It's gotta be no, that, it that doesn't. genuine. Yeah. Exactly. And that's what I think really was illuminated during all of this. And it continues to be illuminated is that there always is the light. And what's interesting is that my daughter really loves all the pictures in the Bhagavatam books. That's like she awesome. loves them. She, I mean, you I could, could pick you could, out a few she won't like. Well, no, she does not like Kamsa. She is like, I don't don't pick up that book on me because that has Kamsa in it, and I'm not looking at Kamsa. Um, but you could hot seat her also. Yeah, no, um, she's good. She's like, she's, uh, good. she's, getting, she's getting good. Getting stuff down. But one of the things that she noticed as she was looking at the pictures, and she said, "Mummy, um, everybody who's good." has light around them. <laughs> she said, look, she's like, Mahavishnu has, uh, has light around oh, his halo. head. A halo. Like she didn't call it a halo, but yeah. Um, and, and sort of that thing, like, yeah, there is, even in like, when like, you know, like Krishna's like schlag and comes up, there's still like, <laughs> like it's still a light it does it around. Me. So like whenever we're in the, <laughs> the battle of it, there's still, um, I was looking at my notes and it was like something about, uh, something about fighting. This is where your hockey people, fan is people, coming out of this you. This is where my hockey fan is Canadian coming out. This was on like December 19th, 2019. <laughs> it was from Canto 4 and it said, the people that don't know how to fight are filled with rage. And I thought, I remember writing that and being like, oh, yeah, that's really interesting because I could fight this a really different way well, in a rageful way, or I could learn how to fight it with grace. And like that's you've got notes there stuff. every day, you take I, notes. Yes, this is like my these Bhagavad were this notebook, Magdalene notebook. That's wow. great, nerd alert. I think that's important. <laughs> no, I think that's important. Yeah. It's called deep spiritual uh, student alert. Nicholas Stewart, this is beautiful. This is, what the Bhagavad Gita Tom's, yeah. suppo- this is what the Bhagavad Gita is supposed to be doing. It's like a staff, a walking staff. And we're trying to, we're going up the hills of life 
got something to lean on very firmly. Yeah. And, uh, and um, you know, you know, another <laughs> interesting thing is, is uh, now I'm cancer free. The Bhagavatam never lets you off the hook with this cancer free thing. Yeah. No. Yeah. You're cancer free, but you could get run down by a car. You could get Lyme disease. You could, there is no, you never feel like now everything's good. The Bhagavatam <laughs> is this nagging reminder of your temporality. It no, is. And it doesn't have to be cancer. Be any m multitude of ways your body can go down quick. The Bhagavatam will remind you of that on a daily basis. There is no, yeah. I'm sticking my head in the sand. I'm just going to talk about God. It's not like that. It's, 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 it's more facing reality. Unlike every atheist claims that you guys are just sticking your head in the sand. You can't face life. You can't deal with the problems of life. We deal with the problems of life every morning at 5 a.m. We talk about these yeah. things. And it gives you a type of sobriety that even when you are cancer free, you never feel like you're off the hook from like mm. death's sickle coming for you. <laughs> no, it's almost like it's in like the rear view mirror and kind of like, like oh, right. I see I see you sickle. It's like waving to you. You like, know, it's going to catch up. <laughs> yeah, but it's almost like a day, like, um, almost like, hey, remember what you realized and like, on like December 9th, 2019, I'm here again. Like right. Right. the lessons, um, it, you know, it, another note that I have is like, here, reflect, repeat, realize, here, reflect, repeat, realize, here, reflect, repeat, realize. And it just like that, that loop. And by no means am I realized, but, um, it, uh, It's been like, just, it's helped me just also treat my physical body with much more respect mm. oh, that's a nice take um, too. and, and honor, uh, in its temporality. Um, I wasn't, I remember, and, and like people that I've worked with now who are in a similar like cancer situation. And we talk a lot about, um, being with like the the present body, mm -hmm. um, which I remember just being like tired, like just really tired and like thinking that my, um, okay, well, if my, if my morning practice is like calm and centering, then that means I'm going to be like good to go for the rest of the day. I'm going to be energized. And like, I wasn't able to do the physical, like the, um, sort of in, the. In other words, you had an asana like, practice that you had been doing that was making yeah. you feel good and feel. You, right. Yeah, it ended up being like a little bit of reverse. Like I found more yeah. like appreciation for like the spiritual, mental vigor, but right. like my my body wasn't there. Yeah. Totally. Like I needed like the really to be like really chilled out, which for me, I mean, you two know me really well. I'm like a you know, like I kind of buzz around. <laughs> she, she buzzes. You mean, I buzz around. Buzzy bee. And I was a buzzy, I couldn't, I was like not a buzzy bee. So it was interesting to, um, I found it, you know, sort of like these quieter practices. And it also just gave me a little bit more time to think about the, you know, the morning practices more, right? So like restorative -y stuff, really quiet, meditative gentle quieter movement actually allowed me to sort of pull the bhagavatam into my physical body mm. in ways that like the vigorous asana i would sort of get caught up in like the physicality of it you so that was kind the, of interesting how the bhagavatam has made her more advanced in spiritual life i mean i'm sorry how the uh cancer has made her more advanced in spiritual life Mm -hmm. Well, I had, I had two options. It could either <laughs> advance me or it could like, like pull me into like materialism. The greatest despair. And it, greatest right. despair. Greatest despair. The greatest despair. It's, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. It, it, it's like death is right there. We get that. The Bhagavatam brings that out, the gravity of the material world. And it also mm -hmm. brings out the hope. And the hope without the understanding of the eternality of soul is short-sighted. Mm -hmm. You know, costume. It's like all these people with their positive mental attitudes. If you're gonna die 
and you're going to leave everything you love behind. What's so positive about that? But this idea of that there's, there's actually, although there's death at every step, there's deep hope in every moment. Hmm. That mm -hmm. is the beauty of what we're studying here. <laughs> yeah, it's another, it's just another illustration of the power of spiritual knowledge, right? But, mm -hmm. you know, collectively, how important it is. And here's a, an example of, you know, individually that, you know, even, you know, honestly, Bobby, you, you know, I, I mentioned already, but I'll mention again, like I was so impressed with your composure, even small parts of it, like, in other words, like losing your hair, right? For like a lot of people, just that right there is like, my God, how am I going to go through the day and go through life? And, you know, you know, it, it, and, and, and in one sense, that was just like a, this, one of the smaller aspects of like what you're going through, you know. She put on a cool well, bandana and made it fashionable. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, it's, uh, it's hard. Yeah. But like one of the, it was interesting, Daniel, who, um, Daniel of Daniel and Elizabeth, mm -hmm. um, where Daniel was in teacher training <laughs> couple. that summer. Amazing people. Um, and I was in the studio and I had just lost my hair that week, mm -hmm. like just, but I was around you. I was around Raghu and like the, all of the men with the exception of Steve Burr, all of the men, there were five men. So four of the men all had shaved heads. Huh. And so I was sitting in the yoga studio and they said, Hey, Bobby, um, are you, are you, why are you wearing the bandana? We know you're bald under there. And I was like, Oh wow, this is interesting. And they, and they said, are you doing it for your comfort or for ours? Like they were like, it was like pretty bold. Right. <laughs> um, and I said like, kind of for yours. Cause I'm, and they're like, uh, hello. We all, we're all we bald. all don't have hair either. Yeah. And like in that yourself, moment, ahead, I was but... just like, yeah. and it was so <laughs> freeing. I think that was also a big part of it too, is to be able to tune into zoom every morning at like five and like my bathrobe and my bald head and like, it'd be cool. Hmm. Like not cool. Right. Yeah, but I get just it. But like, yeah, you can handle it. I can handle it. And, and I remember in 2011, I wouldn't let anybody see me wow. with no hair. And this time around, I, I equate it to, you know, the, the power of the community of just like, we all sort of meet one another where we're at, like how beautiful that out of this, like, Things like bhakti recovery groups are started and other offshoot groups where people are like meeting and connecting and sharing and um, mm. creating space for one another to be who they are in whatever it is they're going through. Like it's all, incredible. All on a very high level. Yeah, exactly. On a high level without it being like a sit and bitch fest. Yeah. You know? Sit and bitch fest. No sitting and bitching. Bobby, thank you. I'm excited. Thank you. I yeah. think I really went way over time. Oh, yeah. No, oh, gosh. No, I went way over perfect. time. I'm so you didn't go over. We kept you going <laughs> over. We, we kept you. We held you here. But we want to thank you, and we're looking forward to, uh, if anyone wants to join me and Bobby in Kali, Colombia, our friend's ashram, the Shama Ashram. Yeah, please we, come. It's yeah, so beautiful a, there. We're doing a, a bhakti and restorative yoga and yin yoga training, mm -hmm. uh, certificate training. You know, now's the time, too, to the, these – facets of yoga are so uh mm -hmm. they speak so loud to us as far as our immune system our health our well-being um yeah when the world's crumbling around us now collectively crumbling restored well, yeah. to yoga yin yoga become very powerful it put it gives us our own like container to um to be outside of the collective anxiety as well yeah. and just create and and like I would feel that when I would go to the clinic, like mornings I would go to the clinic, I would sit in restorative poses to calm my nervous system for myself, but then also mm -hmm. walking into like just a generally nervous space. Great. You know? So, so um, whether you're a yoga teacher and want to add more offerings to what you teach, or if you just want to yeah. go there. And do it for you. <laughs> do it for you. Come join yeah. us. And yeah. how do they sign up for that, Bobby? They go to the um, www.supersoulyoga.com slash yin, or you can send me a message on any of the social platforms mm -hmm. and I can 
we can talk. Supersoulyoga.com slash yin. Y- slash y- yin. yin. All right. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank, oh, great to see thank you. And thank you I for mean, sharing this. It's really, it's really a, it's really a great lesson and it's really beautiful to see people apply bhakti to their, to their highs and their lows and see it, keep them very steady throughout all of it. Thank you. Well, it wouldn't be possible without either of you. I, mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know these things without either of you. And, um, the slow burn into the practice into like the quick flame was really something. So I, <laughs> I can't, um, I don't think I'll ever be able to express enough gratitude that I have for both of you. Um, and also like, way. you know, moving up here and like having like what, like one of my best friends in the world, Mara around like on the daily, like it's kind of like, you know, life is super sweet. So really lucky, thank really so lucky much, that I get to be on the other side of this with all of you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Want to dive into the Bhagavatam now, Kastub? Yeah, let's do it. Narayanam namaskritya naram chayeva narotamam devim sarasvatim vyasam tatojayam mudiraye. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. Unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. And to Shula Vyasadev, the author. Nasta Prayeshva Badreshu Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloki Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki By regular attendance in classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated and loving service to the personality of Godhead who is praised with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Jnana Tamarandasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Madatam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, and my teachers are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Kastuba, nobody gets a pass in this world from pain, from suffering, from loss, from happiness, from good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. We all get it all. Hmm. And we're working on how to navigate our life through through all of it. And we get that special mercy of Krishna. Sometimes we get that curveball to see. Okay, now I want to see. Right. Like, you know, every like when your mom used to like hold your bicycle. Okay, now we got the two wheel bike ready. I'm gonna let you go. No, don't let go. <laughs> and she's pushing you and she's running behind holding the bicycle, you know, and you're like, no, 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 no. And then he just lets you go. And sometimes when we feel this pain in the world, it's like Krishna letting us go. Let me see if you can fly now. And uh, anyway, it was great to see Bobby flying. And uh, we all get that little challenge to see if we can fly. Huh. I just want to fly <laughs> with your arms around the Krishna. Okay. Are you ready? So sure. we are left off on uh, Canto 3, Chapter 14, The Pregnancy of Diti in the Evening. In the evening of all times. Yeah. What's, what's our text number? Mary, you know? We're on text 19. Is that right, Kastubji? Uh, this seems about right to me. Yeah. So uh, why don't we get a little background here? Yeah, what's going on? And, and I think we're, th- I was thinking maybe we could kind of speed through this chapter because uh, in one sense, the whole thing is a side note, right? Like the, this, this, um, this, but but there's a message in it as well. But I want to make sure that we walk away with the right message because otherwise it's it's easy to kind of like, confused i think with this we have um a question going towards you know it was mentioned in the previous chapter that krishna and lord vishnu manifested as this divine boar and fought with his demon hiranyaksha well what's the history behind all that and uh you know i want to know more about that and to know more about that maitreya in his talks to vidura is now describing how how it is that that demon hiranyaksha was born and he's describing that it was kind of like there were inauspicious circumstances that went into even his conception. And so those, those inauspicious uh, circumstances, it's being mentioned here, it had to do with the time of the day that he was conceived. 
And one might think like, oh, is this the message of the Bhagavatam that we got to get like all anal about like every little detail in life and its astrological influence and, and you know. But um, really what the message, it, it has to do with something different. You know, it, it has to do with something more general, I would say. This Kasyapa, who's the father, he's like, he's got this, like due to his practices, like his meditational practices, his spiritual practices, his austerities and so on, he's developed a, a kind of like a sensitivity or an awareness of subtle influences. And his wife, Diti, she's not so aware, right? She's, her level of awareness isn't on the same level, at least not in the moment, right? You with me, Raghu? I'm totally with you. Okay. <laughs> Either you're totally Sucking bored or you're, or you're totally like focused. I'm a sponge. I can't tell. <laughs> I'm a sponge today. Yeah, so like in her, you know, in her, um, in her current mood, you know, which is eager to conceive, let's just say it like that, um, she's like certainly less aware of the influences that are at play. Mm. And, and, and my point here, and, and we can discuss this more as we go, is I don't think what we're meant to get from this is like, hey, anytime you have to se have sex, make sure you don't do it in the evening because of the influence. You know, that's like, not the takeaway. That's not the takeaway. Have sex in the evening. <laughs> yeah. But but it has hashtag more to... that Mara. <laughs> but you know, so so the point's not that we need to become more educated in astrological influences or that we need to implement like um, more apparently random you know, types of regulations in our life when we have sex, when we eat, when we wake up, when we go to, you know, it's like, it, it has more to do with like what our dharma is and that our dharma, our nature, you know, is in connection with love to our source, which is Krishna. And our natural condition is awareness of that principle. Um, and when we're, when we're operating in that, in that awareness, then everything in my life becomes an offering you know, my, my body becomes an offering, my words, my mind, my time, my energy, my wealth, you know, and even things like eating, you know, that, that all plays out. And that plays out in the Bhagavad Gita that like, even what I eat, you know, I cook it in meditation, I make it an offering, and then I eat it. And as well as sex, you know, even sexually, um, that activity becomes a sacrifice or an offering to God. Um, and so it's, when, we, when we're doing everything in awareness of that connection, uh, it, it brings auspiciousness. It, you know, auspiciousness arises in our life. And when we break that, when we, when we operate as if all of this, my body, my mind, my word, it's all mine, right? Your body is mine. You know, that food is mine. Mm. When, we, when, when we break that connection, we, we step into illusion and inauspiciousness arises, pain arises, etc. And so I think that's really what we're meant to be getting from this. Um, but it plays out in a more technical way. And, and, and uh, so let's read. And there's more to discuss on this point. But uh, OK, so this is text 19. Yeah. And this is now now Kashyapa's wife, DT, is, is saying, let's have sex right now. He's like, it's an inauspicious <laughs> time. Right. Yeah. Uh, and now he's going to glorify her. And, and, and say, but I'm indebted to you. And then he gives in, he caves. Mm. Right? Okay. A respectful one. A wife is so helpful that she's called the better half. Was that taken from India, the better half? Well, it's here. It says ardha, which That's means half. half. Yeah. The better isn't exactly there, but, um, I, you know, certainly yeah. there's some yeah. connection there. A respectful Prabh one. Prabhupada has kind of thrown that better in, but he's like okay. saying, you're, at, at least literally he's saying, you're my half. You know. yeah. Okay. A yeah. oh, respectful one. A wife is so helpful that she's called the better half of a man's body because of her sharing in all the auspicious activities. A man can move without anxiety and trusting all responsibilities to his wife. As a fort commander very easily conquers invading plunderers, by taking shelter of a wife, one can conquer the senses, which are unconquerable in other social orders. Interesting. Yeah, so the regulation of, you know, uh, of two people getting married saying, you know, it's so easy to be, um, part particularly for men, right? But like, that, that you know, um, to be controlled by our senses sexually. Mm. But if one, you know, um, through marriage, through the, through the commitment of marriage, through the ritual of marriage, through the institution of marriage, 
you know, it's it's an opportunity to to control the senses, to conquer the senses. Mm-hmm. And when and you know, he, he, I, of course, these things go back and forth. You know, it's wife to husband. It's also husband to wife. But here's being presented as wife to husband. That um, when a when a husband loves the wife and is feeling that connection to her, naturally he becomes that that love, the 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 bond of that love. Um, gives him the strength to control his senses, right? How could I disappoint my wife? How could I break her heart? How could I, you know, that, that love gives him the strength to um, be, control. be controlled as a yogi. Yeah, control the mind and senses. Yeah. Which if you're single, like the brahmachari or the, uh, the sannyasi, you don't have that. You don't have that advantage. You have to just like dig deep or have the, have the company of other monks, etc. So, okay. Um, text but you know, even like text one just has that you say dig deep. Like in other words, ultimately we're meant to feel that connection with God, but mm-hmm. that's less tangible in our life. Often, you know, it's that it, it takes you know a, a deeper spiritual awareness. But one spouse is right there, you know, mm-hmm. and when one's seen that spouse in connection with God, then you're tying the whole thing together. Sure. Um, Twenty one. 21. O queen of the home, we are not able to act like you, nor could we repay you for what you have done, even if we worked our, for our entire life or even after death. To repay you is not possible, even for those who are admirers, admirers of personal qualities. Even though it is not possible to repay you, I shall satisfy your sex desire immediately for the sake of begetting children. But you must wait for only a few seconds so that others may not reproach me. Now, here comes the influence of the time of the day. Okay. This particular time is most inauspicious because at this time, the horrible-looking ghosts and constant companions of the Lord of the Lord of the ghosts are visible. Okay, an interesting rogo, right? <laughs> Lord of the ghosts? <laughs> you say? Lord Shiva's body is reddish, and he is... Hold uns- it, you skip 24. I'm sorry. Lord Shiva, the king of the ghosts sitting on the back of this bull carrier travels at this time accompanied by ghosts who follow him for their welfare so lord shiva is the bhutanath the lord of all ghostly beings they worship he's their worshipable deity lord shiva's body is reddish and he is unstained but he is covered with ashes his hair is dusty from the whirlwind uh, dust of the burning crematorium he is the younger brother of your husband and he sees uh, with his three eyes. Yeah. Now, this is important, too, that he sees with his three eyes. Because, in other words, it's saying that he's got vision that's beyond, like, the normal person's vision. Right? Yeah. And, and, and you know, um, here, Kasyapa and, and Diti, this is, Lord Shiva is actually their brother-in-law. Right? Sure. Because Diti's sister is Sati. Right. right. Who is the, the wife of Lord Shiva. Um, so this is a person that they know, but my understanding here is by, by mentioning three eyes and, and just trying to put the whole thing into context, what he's saying is like, at this time of day, Lord Shiva is moving, right, along with his followers. Mm-hmm. Most people can't perceive it. Diti's not so aware of it. He's aware of it. It's, it's a subtle thing. But he's also saying like, and he sees us. You don't think he sees us, but he does. So for him... Having sex at that time is almost like having sex right in front of his brother-in-law. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's, 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 it, and he's saying, I'm aware of this. And that's not good. That's, you know, and, and she's like, you know, I, I think sometimes I think of, um, I was trying to think of an analogy. And I was thinking, you ever see like, uh, you know, like you got a guy like Dr. Oz or something like that. And he's like, he's saying like, here's like, here's like a, here's like a, a liver from someone that's been like, you know, like drinking alcohol or eating processed foods or something like, like here's a healthy looking one. And here's one for, for someone who eats processed foods or something like that. Right. And you just see like that thing is like all messed up, you know, mm-hmm. here's like a, an artery, you know, look, see how clogged it is. Cause this person like, you know, right. is eating this diet or something like that. So like, a, so that means like that doctor, like he's got an awareness, like most of us just eat and we just put the food in the mouth. You know, you go to the store, the food is there on the uh, on the shelves. It must be food. It must be okay to eat, right? right? Because but it's some... lay, it's in the food store. Yes, yeah. the food it's store. Like the must first be okay time to eat. historically in millions of years we're eating unfood. 
Right. Yeah. Like this crazy. So, so, um, stuff that so, was never meant to be consumed. Yeah. So a doctor with this awareness, right. Would be like, Oh, I can't eat that. I know what it's doing to me, you know, whereas to, where to someone else that might not be as a parent and for Kasyapa be due to his spiritual practice, he's aware, he's got a sense of what's happening. And, and, and he's got a sense that this is like inauspicious and he's got a sense that, that this is all happening right in front of the eyes of Lord Shiva. Um, and he's got a sense that it will affect the nature of the birth, that, that, that um, Lord Shiva and his want, you know, Lord Shiva is very difficult to explain and understand, but he's almost like Lord Vishnu, but he's responsible for that tamasic end of the world, you know, like that, that it, it, it's, it's great that the Bhavatam is like, Although on one hand it's driving us towards the sattvic and ultimately to the spiritual, it's not a hundred percent in condemning like those who are influenced by the the darker modes. And so Lord Vishnu himself kind of manifests in a transformation as Lord Shiva. And he actually cares and loves for those beings. You know, yeah. and he's traveling around and they love him. So there's that connection. So in any case, it's 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 interesting, right? Yeah. And so Lord Shiva is very misunderstood. Um, but in any case, he's saying Lord Shiva is traveling around at this time. He's seeing us. He's right here. He's present. I sense it. You don't sense it, but I do. But because I'm so indebted to you and you're calling upon me, I'm going to give in. But in any case, he's sharing why he feels it's inauspicious. Someone's got to love the ghosts. Yeah. All right. Lord Shiva, there Lord, Shiva, Lord Shiva regards no one as his relative, yet there is no one who, who is not connected with him. He does not regard anyone as very favorable or abominable. We respectfully... He doesn't judge, right? He's, not, he's unjudge. That means he's non-judgmental. Hmm. We respectfully worship the remnants of his food, and we vow to accept what is rejected by him. It's, such, it's so interesting, right? Like, Kasyapa... Diti's father, Kasyapa's father-in-law, Daksha, will look at Lord Shiva in another way. And we told that story recently, and we'll, it will come to it, you know, eventually. Hmm. Where, you know, it's easy to see that person's hanging out with dark people, they're bad. Whereas, like, what Kasyapa is seeing is, no, don't you see, it's his good quality, that he's, like, actually, he cares for everyone. He's, he's, he's non-judgmental, right? Yeah. Although no one in the material world is equal or greater than Lord Shiva, and although his unimpeachable character is followed by great souls to dismantle the mass of nations like this, he nevertheless remains as if a devil to give salvation to all the, all the devotees of the Lord. He mass nevertheless of remains as if a devil. We're massive nations from Dayton, Ohio. Massive, massive <laughs> nations. Uh, we're M O we're M O N Dayton. <laughs> if you're new to this, me and Kostuba find out quote pieces of the Bhagavatam that we can turn into like hardcore and metal bands. That's right. Although no one in the I'm going to read that again. Although yeah. no one in the material world is equal to or greater than Lord Shiva, and although his unimpeachable character is followed by great souls to dismantle the mass of nations, he nevertheless remains as if a devil to give salvation to all the devotees of the in, Lord. In other words, if you look at him, he's covered in ash. He's got a, a, a necklace of skulls. He's right, reddish. Carrying a trident. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, so he looks like, oh my God, like that guy is like a dark character. Right. But actually he's not. Yeah. Okay, I got that. Uh, unfortunate, foolish persons, not knowing that he is engaged in his own self, laugh at him. Such foolish persons engage in maintaining the body, which is eatable by dogs, with dresses and ornaments and garlands and ointments. Mm. So, yeah, so like, in other words, he seems to be totally unconcerned about his physical appearance, and he's being criticized by people who are concerned about their physical appearance. And, and he's saying, well, who's really, you know, um, the wise one here? Yeah, you're, that body that you're rubbing lotion on, Baka Justin. <laughs> <laughs> that Justin's doing it right now, rubbing lotion on his body. That lotion on the body, that body is eatable by dogs. <sighs> it's, 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 it's not that you know, the Bhagavatam brings that thing in, 
your body is eatable by I think that was Shakespeare who said eatable wor, wor, food, food for, for the worms, worms. right? Yeah. But in the Bible it's almost say food for dogs. You know, like dog. Just take a sniff and Jackal. Just ch- chew your Yeah. Um Text twenty nine. Demi demigods like Brahma also also follow the religious rites observed by him, Shiva. He is the controller of the material energy which causes the creation of the material world. He is great, and therefore his devilish characteristics are simply imitation. Hmm. Okay, Betray- so that, that, that was, that was Kasyapa's reasoning um, given to, to DT, that Lord Shiva, although he appears like this Tamasic person, he's actually a, a great, great, great soul. And he's seeing us with his third eye. Let's let him pass by. You know, it would be better to do that, but you're demanding me. I'm going to give in. So this is at the early in the morning. This is this Brahma Mahorta time? No, this is in the evening, but also at the Sandhya, right? Also at the, oh, the where, where the okay. day meets the evening. Yeah. So people, let's just put this out there. There are ghosts at night. We just want to <laughs> share this. There are ghosts out there at night. And this is the time you got to be careful because you become influenced to Tomasic energy. We all know that nighttime causes trouble. If I always have this saying that I took from my mom. If you're out after 10, watch out. Oh. It's true. If you're out after 10, watch out. Because your mother is like, full of wisdom. She is like uh, Benjamin Franklin, the poor man's <laughs> almanac. or whatever. <laughs> if you're out after 10, watch out. And never and talk to the cops. Never. Yeah. Never <laughs> ask the cops for help. You take it into your own hands. Um, but the thing is, is it's really true. It, it's really true. It's like no good can be coming out from late at night. You know, you know no, no good. Should, another one she said, no good can come from alcohol. Mm. It's a great, great quote. No good can come from alcohol. You say, well, it takes the edge off. You know what? It, it can lead to so many more things. Mm. So you stay up late at night. When I, if I ever have to be out driving around at 10 o'clock, you know, whatever happens, there are very Tomasic elements and people are opening themselves up to Tomasic elements. Mm. Careful out there. And so here it's saying, and so here it's saying, here it's saying, you know, and don't conceive at that time because you're calling Tomasic beings, jivas, you're floating around looking for a womb. (laughs) And they're heading right for yours. (laughs) Coming for your womb quick. But, you know, at the same time, what I want to share, and and I think you see, because to me, this is the higher message is it, Different bhakti yogis will apply different principles in their life to different, you know, like in other words, okay, okay, we had Drew. Yeah, we, He's right, trying to be, re- Kostu was trying to be reasonable here, Mary. Let's be reasonable. Like, for instance, when Srila okay. Prabhupada, when he would advise, when he was asked to advise his disciples about like conceiving children, he didn't even mention the time of day, right? He, what he encouraged them to do was to chant a lot before it and, and do it in so, so you do it in a state of consciousness that's like kind of like I'm doing there, this for God, right? Like we're doing this for God. There's actually very elaborate rituals right. people do in the culture. Prabhupada kept it very simple, which was chant 64 rounds yeah. before you conceive. Now, you could say, well, who wants to have sex after you're chanting 64 <laughs> rounds, you might say. <laughs> <laughs> like ah, forget it. <laughs> yeah, but you know, so so the fact is, is that, well, like for instance, our our principle <laughs> is that we are living in an age where we are not. So, we're more like Diti than like Kasyapa in this, in, in this equation, right? We're less aware of the subtle influences in life. Mm. But what what Bhagavatam is doing, you see, in all those things, you, they'll come out in books like the Vedas and 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 the Upavedas, like the. The extension that the, the texts that are extensions to the Vedas, all these sciences are play out, and a lot of it is subtle, and a lot of it is beyond us, right? Like we are not these kind. Of, you, if you ever meet these kind of brahmanas that are like deeply aware of all these sciences, their whole lifestyle seems entirely impractical to us, right? Mm. The way that they eat, the way that they clean themselves, the, the the way that they live, the way you know, it's like. Their attention to details for us, it would seem way too tedious and overboard. They're aware of all of the, the importance of all these little things. Um, and, and for us, it just seems almost, it almost all seems arbitrary. You know, like here, Diti is like, well, what 
time, what difference does the time make? And Kasia was like, no, the time makes a difference, you know. But what what our great teachers and the acharyas in the, in the in these lineages have have, and what Bhagavatam itself does, right? Because what the Bhagavatam itself does is gonna say, let's simplify this. Let's focus on what's most essential, because we're weak in this day and age in the Kali Yuga. We're weak in understanding all these subtleties and being aware of all these subtle influences. Mm. So let's focus. But if we focus on what's most essential, all the all of that subtle <clears throat> stuff is meant to lead us there anyway. And so, like you, you'll get a verse like, "Om apavitra pavitro va," right? Sarvavastangatopi va, yatsmaret pundarikaksham. Suchi, Sri Vishnu, Sri Vishnu, Sri Vishnu. Right? This is a verse that's chanted to bring about auspiciousness, to bring about purity, even though we're living in very impure, inauspicious circumstances. So, right, so the, the, the translation of this verse is both pure and impure. If while passing through the conditions of material life, one remembers the lotus eyed Lord, one remembers Krishna, then one becomes externally and internally pure. Right. So, like, in other words, no matter, you know, rather than obsess on subtle influences and, and, and details of purity, let me bring my mind to God, which is ultimately where all of this Vedic literature, it, it's the essence of where it's all meant to go. Let me hang on to that thread, right? And then even if I conceive a child at the wrong time of the day, if I'm doing it with remembrance of God, that's the more important thing, you know? That's where it's all meant to leave. And, and, and when I eat, when I, how I sleep, how I, you know, like all the details in life, mm. let me do it all. Let me just try in, in, in my simplified way. It may even be my crude way, you know, compared to these like brahmanas who are like so, so aware of all these subtle things. It may be crude, but if it's focused right, you know, if, 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 my, if I see my life, um, what I eat, you know, my sex life, my family life, my home, my occupation, my time, as well as my spiritual practices. If I get the point that all of this is meant to connect me to God and I'm thinking of God, then everything becomes auspicious, even under the most inauspicious circumstances. Everything becomes pure, even under the most impure circumstances. And to me, that's what we're meant to draw from this. Um, DT and Kasyapa together they they set aside the manual and um and, and they kind of like brought in auspiciousness in mm. uh and, and, we're, and we're meant to just understand that that like when we operate outside the consciousness of of um devotional service of bhakti we bring in auspiciousness into our life and no matter how crazy our the upside down world we're living in if we can see everything as you know see every aspect of our life is being meant to being offered to God. It kind of covers all the bases. It kind of like makes up for, for, um, it kind of makes up for all that we, we lack, which is, and, and the Gita and the Bhagavatam are all designed to help us get there, to, to, to focus us on what's most important. Um, therefore, Krishna says in the Gita, a really interesting section too in the ninth chapter, which is describing people and their different spiritual practices and the different motivations that they have. Mm. But then Krishna will say, um, Ananyas chintiyanto mam, ye jana parupasate, that, but, but those who always worship me with exclusive devotion, mm. right, they may, may or may not be expert in, in all these Vedic teachings and so on, but it's, it has to do with one's exclusive devotion, right? But for those who always worship me with exclusive devotion, meditating on my transcendental form, their mind absorbed in me, to them I carry what they lack and I preserve what they have. Great verse. Right. So important. Yeah, it's like, it may, I, it may even be at the wrong time of day. It may be, you know, like, that's okay. You know, I'll preserve what they have. I'll carry what they lack mm -hmm. because they're, they're ultimately they're focused in their dharma, in, in the highest dharma, in the ultimate dharma with love for God. So you know, that's it reminds where we focus. Because that reminds me of like the original disciples of Swami Prabhupada Mm -hmm. They didn't know that much. Yeah. You know, it's not like like all the cultural things, they didn't know so much. They had faith in their guru. 
and um, they didn't know, maybe they weren't the best at Sanskrit or that maybe no, they didn't know anything about Hinduism or Indian culture. They didn't necessarily know a lot about how to play uh, yeah. the Murdunga properly. You hear those old uh, recordings, like they're not even playing that right. You know? <laughs> right. But what they did have, um, Krishna carried what they lacked yeah. because they understood, the, yeah. the, they understood the main thing. Yeah. Main thing was to worship Krishna, and he's going to carry out. He's going to figure it out for you. He's going to figure out all the rest. They're on the right train, you know. Right. It, it's in a direction. They're with not sincerity, on sincerity, like, right? With sincerity, yeah. with full yeah. on sincerity. Yeah, yeah. That's um, what was appreciated was the, the 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 exclusiveness and the sincerity in their offering, even though it was done in, in ways that were um, technically incomplete or you know backwards or upside down. But but the sincerity of their offering was so deep that Prabhupada, that's, he appreciated that. I, there's one story where um, Srila Prabhupada's disciples were in some temple in Vrindavan where there was, you know, the priests were more um, focused on the external, on the rituals and, and, and so on, than, um, uh, rather than the, the internal. And so they said something to like Prabhupada's disciples, like, oh, you know, it's very good what you Western people are doing. And if you keep this up and you do this for your whole life, then maybe you'll be fortunate in your next life to be born in a Brahmana family in India, you know. And so um, Prabhupada, they, they went back and they told that to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, you know, you should go back and tell them that if they keep doing their temple worship and their rituals well, they might be fortunate enough that next life they take birth in the West as, as a, you know, as a devotee and serve the way that, you know, that these devotees are serving with that exclusive, you know, devotion. Mm. So Bob yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll tell it them. <laughs> they tell them. us, we'll so, tell yeah. them. <laughs> you, you'll be lucky to be born like us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what, Kostuba? It's at the end of the show time. It's the end of the show time. Uh, Mary, you got some takeaways for us, please? I do. A couple of them are from Bobby. Um, mm -hmm. Align with faith, not fear. Nice. Keep, keeping our foot on the gas of our spiritual development. Hear, reflect, repeat, realize. That's good one right there. That's mm -hmm. a tattoo right there, Revo. There we go. Our bodies are eatable by dogs. Maybe that's yes, not a tattoo. Very important, <laughs> but but maybe a picture of a dog eating our body while we're alive. Back piece. Mara. <laughs> That'd be my, for my next tattoo. <laughs> If you're out after 10, watch out. <laughs> good, good. That's Grandma one. Terry, That's Grandma one. Terry, Grandma Terry, Terry Capo. Uh, don't get caught up in the details. Just focus on your connection with the divine. Okay. And every aspect is an offering. Make it sincere. Boom. That's it. And I want to thank Bobby Marchand for joining us today. If you want to join us for our Bhakti Yin restorative uh, certification or just diving in getting away that is happening I think in october october 7th i think supersoulyoga.com slash yin um thanks to everybody who joins us live every morning if you want to join us live on zoom you can do it you go to uh or you email maraji which is uh wisdom of the sages 108 at gmail.com wisdom of the sages 108 at gmail.com i'm going to be in pittsburgh this weekend at Yoga Factory and also uh, Saturday at uh, Sangha Center with Andrea, one of our Zoomers. Zeb and Andrea, two are Zoomers. We, are we, is our schedule good? Are we, do our we have schedule's to good. Our schedule's real yeah. good this weekend. We've got Q&A day on Saturday. Get your questions in, Tamara. And we've we got the have spiritual scientist on Sunday. The spiritual scientist. <laughs> is he a mad Charan. scientist? No, 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 no. He's so maybe you can scientist. put in your science questions if you have a scientific question. I wonder how his UFO study is. <laughs> Let's, 